Hey guys, it's Barry from Barry's Tutoring. Uh, today we've got an example uh, question which I'm going to go through um, and I'm going to break it down and really strip it back to its bare bones. Uh, and the reason for this is I'm going to try and demonstrate to you guys the specific skills as well as knowledge that's required to solve it. So here we go. Now before we get started, I'll just explain um, a few things so that it's easy to navigate. The stimulus is the information that's provided prior to the actual question itself. And the specific question here, um, or actually including that aspect, I would call the question stem. And the answers are what I refer to as the answer options. Okay. Oops. So I'm just gonna get rid of that for a second. Now, if you've watched a few of my videos already, you'll know that I like to go to the question stem first. So let's get started on question one. In these two pairs of alternative carbocations, which is the more stable in each pair? So what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out which one is more stable in each pair. Now we can see that they're referring to carbocations. That must be of, you know, it must be those structures underneath here. So P and Q as well as R and S. And we're trying to figure out which of those, P versus Q or R versus S, are more stable. Okay, so that's what we're trying to figure out. Something about stability. Okay, now if you go to the stimulus now and you try to look for some information that is relevant. Okay, now um, if you refer to the Acer booklet, one of the skills that they actually uh, refer to is to be able to um, identify knowledge in new contexts. okay? So that's what we're doing here. Let's say you've never seen something like this before, but you should be able to go to the stimulus and try to figure things out, like find out what kind of um, information that they've provided. Okay, now another thing that's important to do uh, that they mention is to be able to categorize and select information relevant to a problem. So here we have the problem of being able to figure out which of those structures is more stable. And if we use keywords and do a bit of a word search or a, a term search, and we'll look for things like carbocations and stability or stable, you can see that carbocation definitely is throughout the stimulus. Okay, I'm just uh, underlining it there. Uh, probably more importantly, you can see stabilizers appears here. You've also got stable and you've also got stability. All of these things suggest to us, okay, now in terms of the density of terms that we can identify there, right, it looks like the relevant information is probably there in those three paragraphs, okay? So that's one thing to be able to go and select information that's relevant. Now that we know that those paragraphs are probably important, let's have a look. In the first carbocation, okay, what is it referring to? Looks like it's referring to the structure above, so we've got some examples. The positively charged carbon is attached to three other carbons, which between them have nine hydrogens attached. Okay, the positively charged carbon, I'm gonna circle it, is attached to three other carbons. I'm gonna underline them, one, two, three which between them have nine hydrogens attached. And I can see if I count, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so I'm following what they're saying. Okay, so I'm following what they're saying. All of these hyperconjugations to hydrogens, I'm gonna stop there for a second. All of these hyperconjugations to hydrogens. Now I could replace hyperconjugations with the word bonds, because I know that that's what they are in terms of the attachments between hydrogens and the carbons. I could say all of these bonds to hydrogens. So what this is suggesting is that all of those things that they have ref referred to just now, those nine hydrogens being attached to those specific carbons, those bonds are called hyperconjugations. Okay, so all of these hyperconjugations to hydrogen induce negative charge. So what this is saying is that these hyperconjugations or these specific bonds lead to okay, a negative charge 
um, occurring where? On their respective carbon atoms, which stabilizes the C plus. So that's saying that, and in turn, what does that do? It stabilizes that C plus, which is um, which we've circled there. Okay, so there are lines of logic or lines of reasoning that we need to follow here. Okay, so just to go through it again, there are those specific hydrogen to carbon bonds that we have identified. And those things, those hyperconjugations, lead to a negative charge on those carbons. And those negative charges lead to the C plus being stabilized. So that's the logic that they have laid out for us so far. Let's keep on going. In the second carbocation, the positively charged carbon, okay, let's circle that, is attached to only one other carbon. Okay, I can see that. There's only the one carbon directly attached to it, which has only one hydrogen capable of induction. Okay, which is that one. Okay, fair enough. Let's keep on going. The first carbocation is more stable. Okay, this is great. So when I'm reading this, uh, especially if I was reading this for the first time, I'll be thinking to myself, oh, this is great because what was the question asking um, initially? So question one was asking us to compare two different structures and figure out which one is more stable. So here it's saying that in the example provided, the first carbocation is more stable. It's more stable than the second, and the stability is explained by the difference in inductive effects from the different numbers of hyperconjugations in the two ions. That is a bit of a mouthful, and if you read that, by itself uh, for the very first time, it would probably be quite confusing, but we've already figured out from the previous two paragraphs what they might be referring to. So first of all, the different numbers of hyperconjugations. We know that the thing on the left, or the first carbocation in the, exam in the example provided, has nine hydrogen to those specific carbon bonds, which they refer to as hyperconjugations. The thing on the right only has that one type of bond, okay, the hydrogen to the carbon. So nine versus one, because of that difference in the number of those bonds and the inductive effects. So that's obviously referring to the fact that the hydrogens induce a negative charge, okay, they lead to something happening. Because there are different numbers of these specific bonds, these hyperconjugations, that explains the stability. Now you'll realize that they haven't explicitly told us that more hyperconjugations leads to stability, but we can gather the fact, or, you know, we can gather that if the first carbocation has nine and the second has one, and the first one is more stable, that suggests that more hyperconjugations lead to greater stability. Okay, so the more of the specific carbon to hydrogen bonds we have, the more stable that carbocation is, okay, that more, the more stable that structure is. We can now take this logic, okay, or these rules really, these are rules to follow as well, that's very similar to kind of reasoning really, we can apply it to our question now for things like P and Q. Okay, so let's um, let's draw out P and Q a bit more because you'll realize that um, they, they have been drawn in semi-structural form, okay? Now, another thing that's important to note as well before I, before I draw these out is that we are making comparisons. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Uh, I don't think I have. So that is another skill um, that we uh, are going to utilize, okay? The ability to make comparisons between two different things. In this case, we're making comparisons between two different structures. And uh, while we don't have to do this in this question, if we do have to make comparisons, it's usually good to put things down on paper, um, maybe do a table or, so, or something like that. In this case, we can just annotate on the structures themselves. It should be easy enough. Okay, so, um, okay, oh, actually I won't draw out P and Q, but what I would say though, is that you'll see that um, instead of drawing out all of the bonds, they've got the groups, uh, the shorthand uh, of some of the groups, the methyl groups, as being CH3. This is just assumed knowledge. So if you see a CH3, you know, or you should know, that's a carbon and that is just single bonded to three hydrogens. 
Okay, so in other words, if I write it on the side here, if you see a CH3, that is the same as a carbon with three hydrogens. So I'm not going to draw them out again, but I'm going to be keeping that in mind when I'm counting those specific bonds. So first of all, with P, I'm going to circle the carbon with the positive charge, and I can see that it's got three neighboring carbons, which I'll underline. If I go to the carbon on the left, I can see that it's only attached to the one hydrogen directly. And then on the right hand side, we've got another three here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven of these hyperconjugations, right? These specific hydrogen to carbon bonds. If we go to Q, let's circle the carbon with the positive charge. We can see that it's also got three neighboring carbons. Now, the carbon on the top left, it's got one, two hydrogens that's directly attached. The one on the bottom, it's got three, so three, four, five. So now we've got a total of five. And then the one on the right, we've got an additional um, hydrogen. So that brings our tally up to six. The more stable carbocation is going to be P because it's got seven rather than six. Now you realize that, um, you know, it's pretty close. And I would say that if you try to eyeball this, you know, just look at the question without doing any annotations or whatever, it would be very difficult to determine which one is more stable. Okay, so it's always important to try to visualize things and to do things in a system uh, in a systematic way. Okay, now for the next part of this question, comparing R and S, okay, this is the second pair that we need to look at we're going to have to do a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down so I've got a bit more room. We're going to have to draw it out and this time um, I will redraw them. So R is going to be, I'm going to draw the C plus. Okay, so it's in semi-structural form and we can see there's a H and a CH3. Comes with practice to realize that that's referring to a single bond to a hydrogen and a single bond to another methyl group, which is another CH3. And they're going to have hydrogens there. Okay, so what I've just drawn is that part. Then to the left, we've got another carbon that's attached to a hydrogen. And then this is another thing that is assumed knowledge, okay, which is that if we have a group such as CH3 in a bracket, okay, so we've got it in a bracket, and we've got in subscript two, that's saying you've got two identical groups attached to that carbon. So we've got one, two, um, oops, I'll just redraw that. One, two, you've got a carbon and a carbon, and they have three hydrogens attached to them each. Okay, so now I'm going to do something similar with S. Okay, on the left hand side of this, we've got the two methyl groups CH3 is in brackets, subscript two, and then on the right of the C, plus, we've got a carbon. That's attached to two hydrogens as well as a methyl group. So you are expected to be able to look at something in semi-structural form such as that and know what it should look like expanded with all the bonds kind of showing. This is going to be a lot easier for us to, to complete the exercise, which is to count how many hyperconjugations there are. And then we can make our comparison. All right, so on our left, that's the carbon with the positive charge. And we can see that it's got two, two direct carbon neighbors. If we look at those specific carbons, the one on the left only has the one hydrogen, which is capable of induction, right? That's that hyperconjugation. So it's got only, only got the one on the left there. And then if we look at the carbon on the right, there's another three. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so R has four hyperconjugations. If we look at S, we circle that carbon again, the one with a positive charge. This one actually has three neighboring carbons, okay, adjacent carbons. And then counting the hydrogens that are directly attached to them, starting on the left-hand side, we've got one, two, three on that one, four, five, six in total so far. And then on the one on the right, we've only got that additional two, seven, eight. So we've got a total of eight hyperconjugations. So now we know, now this is a bit more clear cut, 
we know that S is definitely more stable. Okay, so between P and Q, P is more stable. Between R and S, S is more stable. So the correct answer is P. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and it's helped to show you the kind of skills as well as the knowledge necessary. Uh, in summary, what are the things that we've needed to really know? We'd needed to know a bit about how to draw some of the structures. Um, for example, knowing that CH3 um, is a carbon connected to three hydrogens, knowing a bit about the um, the brackets um, kind of thing. So, you know, when, when CH3 was in brackets with the two, that's referring to two identical um, groups. And, but more, more importantly, I think, are those skills, okay? So we've already talked about quite a few skills that have been mentioned in the ACER booklet, being able to identify knowledge in new contexts, okay? You may not have seen uh, this type of topic before. Being able to select information that's relevant to the problem. So we have to make sure that um, you know, are we finding information relevant to carbocations that can help us to figure out which one is more stable? Then being able to follow lines of reasoning, which they have set out for us. Okay. And then uh, finally, making comparisons. So being able to systematically look at one thing versus another and to be able to figure out which one has more or less of something. Okay. In this case, we had to look at the number of hyperconjugations or those specific bonds between hydrogens and carbons. Um, so yeah, again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more of these types of videos, please click subscribe. I've also got online courses for sale on my Teachable site, as well as holding classes throughout the year. If you wanna find out if there's a class running, um, then the best thing is to probably check out my Facebook page for any updates because I'm the most active there. All right, thanks very much, guys. See you next time.